We also inherited a lot of young, fresh artists that grew up on Kung Fu Panda. They were little kids in the theater when Kung Fu Panda 1 was out and they were like crying, like, I can't believe I'm getting to animate Poe. Thank you so much for taking the time today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the Furious Five are not like a main part of this movie. I love that they do get their moment to shine. Yep. How important was it to you that this story brings something new while still tying in things from the previous three films? Great question because, as you know, I inherited a terrific cast already, starting right out the gate with James Hong, Brian Cranston, Jack Black, Dustin Hoffman. Have you heard of this guy? He's done a few <laughs> films. Um, so already we knew that uh, it, it was it was getting crowded with a lot of people and the Furious Five that we mentioned at the beginning, but um, but we wanted to uh, we really wanted Poe to leave the Valley of Peace and visit a whole new Juniper City, sprawling city crowded with animals. It, it was kind of like New York Times in ancient fantasy China, and we knew we wanted to introduce a whole bunch of new characters. So. So it was just a balance between the old and the new and what every, uh, the old and what everyone wanted to see and the new and the fresh and the funny, funny people that wanted to be in it. Yeah, well, let's talk about Aquafina and what she brings to the table here. The best, so funny. <laughs> and um, I, I cheated a little bit because uh, Nora and Jack uh, were already friends. So they were pals and I knew that and the way that they riff with each other and joke, it really informed us and kind of uh, made it solid decision to work with Aquafina because we're like, this is going to be great. Yeah. And it's not easy to be in a film with Jack Black. He is a very <laughs> funny guy and she's just as funny as he is. So, uh, so we had a good time. Yeah. Well, with this being such a beloved franchise already, is there any pressure or nervousness that comes with creating the next installment, especially after it's been so long? After this time. one? No, I mean like bringing oh. this one in. The only hesitation, it's probably why it took so long to get to the screen, honestly, is we didn't want to just make another one. That's, that's uh, especially if we want people to go to the theater to see this on the big screen. We wanted it to be epic. We wanted it to be a great story. We wanted to further pose adventure. We wanted him to learn a lesson, to have a great theme. So um, the only hesitation was making sure that we had that, and adding to that, we wanted to have an incredible villain. And that's not easy, because I think this franchise has the best villains of all time. So once we started to uh, settle on a really great story with a really great villain and a really great adventure, the rest of it was easy because I inherited a great cast. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be a part of Kung Fu Panda for the cast that I didn't have yet. And then all the artists, uh, uh, DreamWorks really has the best animators and designers of any studio that I've ever worked at, so. Well, I wanted to talk to you about the animation because I love how there's different styles for certain yeah. key moments. Isn't that neat? Yes, yeah. how did that decision come about? Well, it, it's all about story. It's like, what does this moment need? And if you notice, if it's like, if it's really, uh, if it's a really emotional moment, we're not so wacky. We get a little real. I mean, the fur still looks beautiful and sometimes it rains a little bit. And then when it's fun and silly and tavern fighting, like the animators just go for it and they can try whatever they want to. The interesting thing was, is there's a lot of animators that worked on part one, two, three, and now four. So they were, they knew what they were doing and they were terrific. But we also inherited a lot of young, fresh artists that grew up on Kung Fu Panda. They were little kids in the theater when Kung Fu Panda 1 was out and they were like crying, like, I can't believe I'm getting to animate Poe. So uh, so we had a great time. Well, speaking of Poe, I mean, Jack's been, you know, voicing forever. Yeah. I've got to imagine he's very, very comfortable in the booth, but what is it like watching him do his thing? It is a party. Have you met him? Yes, uh, I did. And amazing, <laughs> yeah, I just sit back and I laugh and I have a great time. So it's, uh, the only one thing that's interesting about Jack is he's so funny. And he's so entertaining that I'm not sure a lot of people realize or notice he's also a tremendous actor and he's making really specific choices and he's digging into scenes and he's finding like the emotional core of everything. And it was similar when I worked with Eddie Murphy. I was like, whoa, this guy is a terrific actor. These guys are really good actors. And I think uh, oftentimes people that are so funny and so comedic, I, I think it's a trick where you don't realize that they are killing it. Mm -hmm. Very accomplished actor, Jack Black. Yeah, he's amazing. He's awesome. Amazing. Well, there, is there anything he can't do, by the way? No, I don't think so. You I heard mean, he this can, song. Can Britney Spears. The, the song at the end, Britney <laughs> yeah. Spears, Jack Black, Tenacious D. Yeah. 
working with Britney Spears, and on top of it, Hans Zimmer came in and put some violins on it. So it was like, when is Hans Zimmer ever going to work with Britney Spears and Jack Black again? That's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so insane. fun. It's so amazing. Fun. Well, congratulations. I love the film. And uh, now get to work on the next one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 